Memphis criminal defense attorney Andre Wharton is here now. Yes, he is. He's joining us in the studio now to talk more about this DOJ investigation and the impact it could have. Welcome. Good to have you with us. Good to be here, Kim. Thank you. First of all, I'm just curious, what was your response when you heard, your initial response when you heard about this uh, DOJ announcement? Well, it was, I guess, a sense of relief. Uh, I mean, we've all known, I mean, whether it's just mm -hmm. anecdotally or situations that have transpired in this community that has caused us some pause and concern. Okay. Obviously, the Nichols is just one example of many that we've seen. Smaller, that's a big, on, on a big scale. And so I was relieved uh, that the DOJ is going to look at it. I've seen cases that I've handled mm -hmm. personally that have raised the uh, I, my eyebrow and the antenna in terms of uh, maybe systemic issues or mm -hmm. constitutional problems, and um, I'm just one attorney here in the city of thousands of attorneys. So uh, I was relieved that uh, DOJ is going to come in and look at this independently. Right. Now, Mayor Strickland um, asked for an informational review from the DOJ in February, um, but today in his statement, he seemed concerned or disappointed that the DOJ was going forward with a pattern and um, a pattern and practice investigation. What are the differences in the two? Well, I mean, you, you got to look at it. The, the, what Mayor Strickland is talking about is an internal investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to look at it from top down and his top brass looking at their practices. But the DOJ is an outside investigation, mm -hmm. of course, uh, looking at it from a big picture, you know, a higher level and looking at constitutional violations. They're going to look at data, statistics. And uh, I think uh, it was uh, D.A. Moro who mentioned this is... He's, uh, he didn't use the word relief, but he was pleased that DOJ mm -hmm. is going to come in and look at it. So I think what you have there is this independent review. And a lot of times when you want to restore trust and you want to make sure you've gotten it right, perception is so important. So when you have this outside entity, i.e. the Department of Justice looking at it, it brings more credence and credibility to mm -hmm. the investigation versus your internal folks looking at your own policies. And right. So it's just like we use consultants to look at our practices as a, in a small business or uh, media outlet, uh, same same uh, concept. Right. You, you mentioned what DL, DA Mulroy said about um, restoring trust and confidence in the police department. Do you think this is the this will do that, or is this just the start? This is an excellent point. This is just the start. I think it's going to take more, but this is a big start because you have the federal government now saying, "Hey, look, let's look at these practices." I think mm -hmm. uh, Attorney General, Assistant Attorney General uh, Clark, I think is her name, uh, Kristen Clark. Um, said, hey, look, we've had reports uh, of this being a systemic uh, continuing mm -hmm. pattern, and it's of significant concern that they're going to actually do this investigation. So I think it's a huge start, but we're going to need more, and it's going to have to be sustained. It can't just be a one-week, two-week thing and right. we issue a report. What do we do after the report is finished, after these two years or whatever it's mm -hmm. going to take as, you know, you look at the Louisville situation? Right. What do you do in the long term? both internally as far as the department, but also the federal government, the oversight piece. That's what's critical. Um, you got new hires that are going to come in. They're going to want to see what kind of culture is this. Right. And you want to start that from day one. This is a culture we do clean policing. We're tough. Uh, we do the right thing. We combat crime, but we do it the right way and we follow the Constitution. Right. I, I know you mentioned, you mentioned Louisville. There's also uh, Minneapolis. Sure. Um, um, what, can we, what, what should we expect after this investigation two years from now probably is over? What should we expect for this city? Oh, I'm sorry, actually, uh, that news conference we talked about earlier uh, between our state, for our state, held by our state representatives apparently has begun. Let's listen in. Want to do something You've been listening to so a news conference that was uh, put together by State Representative G.A. Hardaway. And um, there were several, of course, uh, community leaders there, another State Representative, Justin J. Pearson, and, of course, uh, Van Turner, uh, mayoral candidate and president of the NACP, NACP among, among other uh, community leaders. Um, this is going to be an exhaustive investigation by the DOJ, but... Something that kept being pounded on during this news conference, community involvement, community involvement. How important is that really? I mean, obviously it's very important. Explain why. Well, I mean, Kim, that's the substance of the research. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you can't get good data and good information to know whether there are any issues if people don't cooperate and be really transparent and forthcoming about it. I've seen scenarios personally, clients I've had, where they'll start, they'll expose a situation that they experience, but for fear, uh, for retaliation or, or their safety, they will pull back. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be incumbent upon folks who have experienced these things or who have loved ones, who've had loved ones to experience it, to come forward and to realize you're going to be protected. They're going to be as discreet as they can with this. But in some respects, you're going to have to be 
forthcoming and become public about it because we can't get to the root of the problem of the, as they discuss unless we, you know, really flush it out thoroughly. And so they, they need the information in order to do the research and the good work that is going to need to be uh, conducted. All right. And if you want to continue watching this uh, news conference, by the way, you can do so on our Facebook page and also on our, uh, our web page, actionnews5.com. Thank you so much for joining us today and sticking around through this news conference as well. Really appreciate Thank you for it. Having me, Kim. I appreciate your we'll have to have you back. <laughs> I, I'd enjoy that. Thank All right. Now, the Department of Justice is also asking, as we mentioned, anyone who may have had an experience with a Memphis police officer to come forward. The DOJ says your input is crucial to this investigation. The email address and phone number is on your screen right now. That email address is community.memphis at usdoj.gov. The phone number 888-473-3730. For more reaction to today's DOJ announcement, please, or plus the full news conference from earlier today and the one you just saw, go to actionnews5.com. Our team coverage continues on Action News 5 at 5. We'll be right back. <laughs>